Hello! Sorry, I was... What's going on? <sighs> Awkward as Panda, perfect timed raid. Hello? Ms. Face, Awkward as Panda. Cerulean Riot, what's going on? Dragonfire, Automaton, Dodge, Panic Bomb, Paint Liquor. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Friday. It's Friday. We have survived yet another week. Although it seems funny to say that because this is only like, what is this, the third week of, yeah. of January? <clears throat> I just uh, pretty much finished the Hulk. I have been lazy and not doing my job with getting the, the last bits done. Jordan started, well, I started the base. Jordan then added some to the base, and then I finished the base, did the manhole cover, finished the, the parking meter. And then did the black ring on the base and a couple of other small things. Went over and reglazed my highlights finally with uh, bright yellow green on him to get all that dialed in to where I want it. So yeah, so Hulk is ready. I like it. Gabe will be happy with me. He's been angry not being able to photo the Hulk. I also, for some reason, primed Spider-Man and I don't remember why. So that's how my day is going. Mine too. That cloak looks good. The green, I like. Can we get a comparison between the Hulk manhole and the Lockjaw manhole? I think Lockjaw may have gone to LVO. I don't know where he keeps all that. <clears throat> My manhole has three colors on it. <laughs> it's it's a. Uh, uh, dark camo green followed by a, a wash of flesh wash and then faded green highlights. It's quick. <laughs> the manhole is not the star of the show on Hulk, it turns out. Travel Cedric, thank you for the uh, prime sub. That's about as simple as it gets. Dark camo green, flesh wash, faded green. Ta-da. They just want to hear you say manhole. Manhole. I just want you to shut your manhole. Well, huzzah, That's going to be my new thing. I'll just throw back my legs and so pollute my like breeches really with really delight. I'm really scared, but I don't have my mouse right now. Can you turn it off and on on the bottom? Game delay. Can we... You're curious about the scale? What? He says he's not that juvenile. Lies. Is the bot back? Where? W what do you mean, is the bot back? Hey, Fire Eric, what's going on? I am right, what's going on? I don't think that... Or Ray. Yeah, it was just a raid. I think that. I think I think we're safe for now. That doesn't mean it won't. Happen. It's been happening to lots of people over the last few days. Lots of the streams that I've bounced around to have had it happen. So, if I were going to be like that, I would try to get them to read farty toots a lot. Ooh. Definitely don't try to get us to read farty toots a lot. <laughs> we would never want to say farty toots a lot. Awkwardish Panda got hit a few hours ago by the by the spam bots. Yeah. Did you get like a bazillion follows all at the same time? Yeah. That happened to us yesterday. That was crazy. King Tone Three wanted to applaud the team on the great ad I saw the other day. Had me rolling. Which one? Don you know, Mahogany. Was it Don Mahogany? I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna take a wild guess. Was it Don Mahogany? Is it the Don Mahogany one? King Tone. Manhole on the Hulk seems smaller. Yeah, it is pretty small. They might be trying to make Hulk seem big. Mm -hmm. If you need some wizard models, that must mean you got wizard's butt. I'm guessing. 
Ghost Hunter, you are first. Congratulations. Some naked wizard models, perhaps? Is that what you need? <laughs> yep, it was Dawn. <laughs> the shaking the head bit at the end was perfect. <laughs> The bright yellow green on its own will be a little bit bright. And I don't want to have to continue wiping it off, so I'm going to mix bright yellow green with green. What? Someone is targeting the mini painting community? The person doing it actually threatened Brush for Hire in chat yesterday? There was evidence to report that. That is... For what? Yeah. Like, what why are they, they targeting kind of, the mini painting and what community? what kind of threat? People need to just paint miniatures. They need a, a better hobby than being troll in a bot. AC miniatures, just about everyone has been hit at least once. Good question. About why. Bored people doing bored people really. things. I wonder if it's the same person that tried to swat Kenny. Next level painting. Something and I hope they step on a Lego. Next, next level painting got threatened with a swat. That was crazy. $50. Start a GoFundMe. You could easily get fifty. You need fifty bucks that bad. Plenty of people out there will donate fifty bucks to a GoFundMe. Yeah, get a GoFundMe. Please donate fifty bucks so I don't have to swat streamers. Hope they never get to taste delicious pro acro. Hey, Maybe they're the ones that we should tell to use the paint. See what you did there. You're a bot. Should use the paint. What's going on, Aaron? And I'm just doing another quick pass here with regular green before we dump into the uh, bright yellow green mix. Forgot where we left off yesterday. We kind of had left a uh, very thin green layer over the jade and purple. So I'm gonna try to bounce that up a little bit more into green real quick. And this is Lionel. Lionel Richie. <laughs> Lionel L. Ritchie. AC Miniature said he's procrastinating when he should be painting. Well, got commissions or what are you trying to do? You just painting for Golden Demon, trying to get your Adepticon stuff ready. That's coming up. That'll be here quick. You coming to Adepticon? <laughs> Player Street. Hello. Awkwardish Panda said the cape is looking great. Thank you, thank you. And yep, it's a Golden Demon entry for Adepticon and a charity Primark. Okay. 60 days till Adepticon? Yeah. That seems insane. Isn't it silly? Yeah. Charity Primark for Nova? In OCF? I don't even paint that damn thing. We need to get you uh who's hello just wanted to say that my raffle prize arrived the other day it was a wonderful surprise and a very kind gift thank you so much happy new year awesome our friends over at element games for getting that out to you nice Dame delay said in their stream awkwardish panda called me a chaos gremlin in monument hobbies chat I would like to protest. Well. I can't, but I would like to. Yeah. 
I mean... <laughs> Hogwarts Panda said, protest away game delay doesn't make me incorrect. <laughs> yep, I was going to say. <laughs> you can fight the truth all you want. AC said, it's another one. Fulgrim was for Nova. Doing Ferris for one over here. Oh, gotcha. Okay. For the charity. Okay. Well, I take it back then, sort of. <clears throat> Am I giving you... Are you breaking out in hives, Aaron? Because I'm painting the lion without any sub-assemblies. Not a single one. Lots of compliments on the green. Sapo, James Sirem. Doing the rough, sketchy parts right now, but thank you. It won't be this bright. But I'm laying in all of the base coats with the jade and the dark purple to get this kind of cool iridescence working. And then glazing the green over the top. Solo, I sent a, I sent a few because uh, I figured that you don't order from us very often and probably didn't have any. <laughs> Ghost Tender is actually wanting to claim the title of the Chaos Goblin. I guess. He likes that one. Like, yeah, wait, I, if you don't I want am it, the Chaos Goblin. If you don't want it, I'll take that. How's everybody doing? Any exciting, fun weekend plans? I have a little work to do this weekend. You do? Yeah. What do you got to do? I just get stuff organized and put in the, there's some distributor orders that we need to get in and office -y type things. I got to make paint. Yeah. Slayer Street's going to be focusing on the January challenge this weekend. So that sounds awesome. fun. Good painting weekend. For those of you who are not sure what that means. Oh, there it is. Um, in, in our Discord, we do monthly painting challenges that are open to everyone, all skill levels. They're not contests, they're competitions or challenges. Not competitions, they're challenges. Um, just to help you maybe try some new techniques or um, paint a different model than you've ever painted before. Paint for a specific theme. Uh, we provide the theme and then you have the whole month to paint a model. At the end of the month, we do a review where we go through and look at each one that's finished and then um, talk about them. And usually whoever's in the room will choose one that they think fit the theme the best. About some small prizes. They're super fun. Good way to push yourself yeah. into unfamiliar territory a lot of times. And... Uh, Spend time focused on parts of, of the artistic process that, as many painters, we miss sometimes. <laughs> Ghost Hunter said, I'm freaking out because a scary lady hockey puck is headed to my house and I have to paint her. Okay. That's a flat busty. <laughs> Why are you freaking out? And she's oh, not scary. Oh, the texture, texture trainer. trainer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like not following along at all. <laughs> on that i'm like i only what? know i got it right away because i saw ghost hunter uh saying in, in discord oh yeah, yeah 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 about it yeah i answered back in discord and i said that's exactly what they're for you know yeah <laughs> messing up they're, they're trainers training it's literally in the practice. name <laughs> it's it's in the name cold up here in Kanakistan and we are staying inside where it's warm. I'm supposed to warm up over the weekend so I might go for a drive. Well, the huzzah, dog. huzzah. I'll just dogs, throw back uh, my legs and pollute my britches with delight. they head out the window because it's too cold? Do they still enjoy the ride? Our dog lives for putting our head out the window. Game Delay said I'm going to try blue-white as the highlight on a mane, a mane up from khaki. 
I don't know how it will work, but I'm doing it. Sounds good. The whole crew headed to Adepticon? No. Um, we know for sure that Jordan will be there, and Philip will be there, and Gabe will be there. I don't know if we've determined everybody else going. Have I'll we? be there. Jason's going to be there. I will probably not be there. Do Boo Babu finish the January challenge? I'm going to be painting his brethren dreadnoughts. <clears throat> Xenobon's going to head down to LVO tomorrow and pass out free shrugs. <laughs> free what? Shrugs. Shrugs? <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Eh. <laughs> I don't know. Hi. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> pass out free shrugs. <laughs> like, eh. Awkwardish, paint, uh, awkwardish Panda, lots of painting, laundry, closed captioning a show, and hopefully staying out of the cold. You mean like adding captions to like one of your streams or something? I'm interested in this. Sapo, my new brush arrived today. My plans are to finally see what all the hype is about your sables. Awesome. Quad has to work. Our British Panda gonna sit down with a nine-year-old tomorrow and paint, so that should be fun. I love it. What are you guys gonna paint? King Tone, awesome, welcome. Always love to have new folks join the Discord. Black Wolf, 63 months sub. Unpossible. Hi. How's it going? How in the world have we let that guy stay here that long? <laughs> May press mold some spearheads so I can re-weapon some slave knights. Or maybe laid up with back issues. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> I mean, if given a choice... Yeah, I'd, I'd pick the first one. Short hair dogs, when it's minus 18 C, they stay inside. Once it warms up, yes, the windows get opened and they get to jet blast air into their noses. Our dog, uh, same thing, loves to have her head out the window. We took her out for a drive and it was raining. She did not love it as much. Very bummed. <laughs> That was not what car rides are for, Dad. She was, like, probably bummed with us like we did something. I, I let the windows down for her. Yeah. She would stick her head out and then come right back in. <laughs> like, nope. But I wonder if... The, I wonder, you always wonder, like, do dogs blame you for that? Yeah. She's down. Doing to me. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> Game delay. I was going to ask that, too. Jade said, we have my company's holiday party tomorrow. And Gabe really said, which holiday is January 20th? An, an MLK Day party? Probably just that everybody's actually in town. Yeah. <laughs> like, nobody has time around the actual holidays. But we'll do it a month later. So now I'm just mixing in bright yellow green with the green. And again, just sketching. See, my very rough brush strokes have not let up. I love painting fabric the same reason I love painting skin like this because you can get away with it being very rough or maybe not very rough but having some random texture thrown in along the way because of you know beat up threadbare you know i don't know that the lion's cloak would be threadbare but i mean he's ten thousand years old so maybe his clothes didn't last very long <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Jade. <laughs> But but maybe take the opportunity to pretend like you're the biggest Packer fan and wear a jersey and one of those cheese hats. Zappa wants to see Vince on a stream for a guest appearance. We've talked to some of the crew. I am going up and guest appearing on Miniac and John's show beginning of February. So that'll be fun. If you uh, are a trapped under plastic fan, do they, are those live? No, so you're going up and um, recording it, and then it'll come out at the beginning of February. I don't you're, think you're they do it. I don't think they do it live, but we are doing the Miniac stream live uh, where we play BattleTech. So there will be a live component okay. going on while I am there. Yeah, the, the Trapped Under Plastic, the podcast is not live normally, they, people are saying. Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, Every now and then they'll do it at a convention, but yeah, yeah. the recorded one is generally just uh, just that. Uh, AC has a question about Noosh. Can it be removed in the same way as oil washes for streak and grime? Yeah, that's the whole point. You have discovered <laughs> why it's cool. It allows you to use a full water-based acrylic as a subtractive weathering tool. Um, if you look at the video, Aaron, that I did with the uh, Death Guard Contemptor on YouTube, it'll show you exactly that. Uh, they're saying you need to bring lots of tendies and fireball. Are they going to make you go to Cane's? No. Probably. <laughs> I will be interested to see, because I'm staying at Scott's house. So I will be interested to see what their uh, Minnesota hospitality is going to be like. Minnesota nice. Can it be reactivated? No. Which we believe is a real plus. One of the things I hate about oils and miniature is that you don't really need it workable for longer than it takes you to get the streaking done. <clears throat> but the reactivation of it winds up being a real problem. Um, so this is the outcome of that video model and all of this was just kind of blotched on you'll watch me in the video i just kind of blob it on and then i take the makeup sponge right and wipe it off just streak it so all the directionality comes from the removal of the paint like you would with a an oil wash right but it gives a really really good weathering very, very fast, and with water base instead of solvents. So there's no mess. Make stuff really, really simple in that bone. And you can still use oils over the top of it if you have, if you want to do like panel lining. Acrylics will never run as fluidly as an enamel or an oil. So if you're doing like pin washing over long distances, you can still go back over this with an oil. You don't have to varnish, um, it won't reactivate. You can throw paint right over the top of it. Easy peasy. Who said play Battletech live? Awesome. That's a stream I pray I get. Yep. It'll be Miniac stream. Yep. Yeah. So just make sure you're following Miniac on Twitch. And yeah, I'll be on Miniac stream, and we're I'm headed up there with all of the uh, all of the models. So it'd be good, good fun. As it gets closer, we'll make sure that we're announcing the. Yeah, we'll announce all the details. Time for sure. and details.
Baby J has been using Noosh on, I think, everything. It's been the single fastest selling individual product we've ever launched, I think. Can't keep it in stock. <laughs> uh, sounds handy as i get further behind your pants <laughs> the game really said i'm assuming you meant paints but the typo is more fun <laughs> <laughs> what is this yeah. i think he's talking about noosh and um getting like more more and more of our paints uh -huh. but it, but the typo was pants, pants. yeah <laughs> Anything that makes the suns and forests faster. <laughs> Stupid me, make a New Year's resolution to finish those. That's AC. Oh, Aaron? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Baby J has done exactly that. He's found that it just lets weathering for his Sons of Horus stuff just be instantaneous. He just can, you know, focus more on getting your base colors situated the way you want to, but not having to do too much in the realm of, you know hard painting. I'm really liking that. And that was all idea. You know, we see <laughs> um, so many people coming into the hobby and, you know, if you're not a, um, a painter that's been doing things for a long time and you hear stuff like, yeah, oil washes are great. And then you go grab oil wash. It's like one of the worst experiences in the world <laughs> until you get a feel for it. And so, <clears throat> and then on top of that, when you have, you know, solvents and <laughs> stuff you have to be using the whole time in order to get it to work right, that's a nuisance for a lot of people too. So doing it with acrylic is... Much better, and I've been wanting to do something like this for decades, and it's just not had the opportunity with a product that we felt comfortable in. Now we do. Game delay uh, is that in my head I'm replacing every time someone says paints with pants. And Xenobond had said, took all my paints down for the holidays. <laughs> Did a bunch took of all my pants down. <laughs> Did a bunch of nooshing that I otherwise would not have been able to do in such a portable work environment. Love it. And yeah. <laughs> Xenobon took their pants down for the holidays. <laughs> and then he says, I see paint liquor in a new light. <laughs> Stoney said, step one, purple. Step two, jade to shift color. Step question mark through question mark. Magic step. The cloak is now the Northern Lights. Just everyday Jason color magic. They do kind of have a Northern Lights vibe. It, this, this cloak is sculpted really cool. It has very crisp folds to it. Yeah. Almost like it's origami. It's almost like paper. It's not quite that sharp. But, you know, it has a lot of very tight um, folds to it rather than big, it looks, flowy, bulbous super cool. ones. So it gives a lot of really good contrast to play with, which is one of the reasons why I decided to go with the purple um, jade route mm -hmm. to build up to green, because I knew it was going to have a lot of contrast there that makes it look pretty cool. So, yeah, not too chubby. And that's brighter than I want it, so we're going to do a wash. And... Uh, Uh, 
I think about this one. Maybe we do, I don't know if Dark Jade darkens it up too much. Um, and makes it maybe a little too blue. I don't want to lose all my yellow green. I can go back over it though. So there's always that. I could do a black green glaze. Might that might be really bitching actually. Paint liquor as just a quick summary. Um, there was someone in chat who had said Let's something about paints, but they mistyped it and put pants and game delay is now imagining every time he sees the word paints he's he's seeing pants and so since your name has paint in it he's now reading your name as pant liquor black green it's different black green has a, a leaning towards blue so uh that should be really good for us it'll accent both the um the jade the purple and the green right because we're gonna do it as a glaze remember as you're glazing to always go with a darker color than what your eyes want to see because as you thin a color out it desaturates it and as you put it over brighter colors right it's gonna be a lot lighter AC said, talking of green, of green oxide has usurped jade on the suns. Oh, that was a lot. Oops. Let's dump some of that out before it reaches the pigment. Oh, boy. A lot, a lot. That may still be a lot, a lot. Ah, eh, we'll try it. <laughs> I, uh, I grabbed the, uh, the other water squirter because mine ran out earlier when I was finishing up the Hulk. And that one really works. Yeah, it's Tony there. The, the first one is on the store now. So it does exist. Lumberjack Tim. What, the, uh, the texture, texture trainer? Texture trainers. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be perfect. Sappho said, my black green has a gloss look to it compared to all the other super matte paints. Black green is a little bit more satin. So is dark purple. Um, there are a couple, because we, we don't use a tremendous amount of pigment in those colors, some of those pigments are more difficult to get to be that pure matte. So yeah, there's a couple of colors in the line that, and especially if you thin them down, will give a little bit more of a satin sheen. Um, mostly the dark ones. None of the bright ones do that. Uh, let's think. What do I want for, uh, I'll just dig away on it. Any more satins coming? Uh, satin black, black is the only one. Because black really needs satin to get as deep black. of a black as you want. So we've got a satin black coming. Oh yeah, that's going to be great. This is going to be more like an overall glaze. So I'm going to go and do every portion of the green with this black green. So my goal here is just to get good overall coverage. Don't stop in open areas. And we'll see how many coats we need to get it the way I want it. Tim, be careful out there, please. What's he doing? said it's not often i do the speed limit but when i do it's because it's snowing and the roads are bad <laughs> please maybe even go a little under right now give yourself room that's perfect i love pro krill <laughs> they have good stuff is satin black in the next one of the yes. next releases? Mm -hmm. So springish. Yeah, early April. Q2. Like April, yeah. Late April. Maybe early May depends on how production timing goes around here, but we're certain we will have them at Adepticon. So if you go to Adepticon, those colors are intended to be there. Of course, there's no guarantee on that until it happens. But the goal is to have all of the new colors at Adepticon. 
and then we will uh, release them worldwide for general release in April or May. So it's the first time we're doing that. We have the two new signature artists coming over for Adepticon this year. Uh-oh, that yep. gave some clues. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it that way. That could mean a lot of things. We're bringing the guys to Adepticon with us, wherever they're coming from. <laughs> Did you say guys? <laughs> Artists. Hoosiers, happy Friday to you, too. Game night for you and your friends. It's a game night here, too. Nope, canceled it. Huh, you did? Yep. Oh. I have a 5 o'clock, so, oh. and it's up in, like, North Phoenix, so I can't be here until, like, 7, and I didn't feel like wanting to have to come back here after it, so. Well, huzzah, huzzah. I'll just that. throw back my legs and Eight. pollute my um, It only made it on the calendar, like, a, an hour ago, because oh. they forgot to send the invite out. Uh-oh. I had to ping everybody and be like, is this still happening? And they were like, oh, yeah, gosh, I'll send that invite out now. I'm like, well, how is it happening if nobody knows about it? But I guess everybody but me had oh. figured that it was a done deal. Is it your your forum group? Yeah. Oh. Um, it's our 10th member interview. Oh, we're supposed to have ten people, person. but we only have nine. Oh, I thought you had ten. Okay. No, well, we had ten when we had our uh, uh, initial moderator, but he went back to his old group, so, which was intended, I guess, from the beginning. There was a chance at one point that he stayed, but he chose them over us. Well, I take back what I said. No game night here. Okay. I had to cancel it. Had to be the enemy of fun. <laughs> JP Gray, good afternoon. Game delay said so. Which European painters have been using Pro Acryl recently? Lots of them. There actually are a lot of Europeans. Jumping on the Pro Curl train as it becomes more and more available over there. And like it has been worldwide, the phenomenon really only takes hold when you get to go through your whole first model with it. And realize that all the stuff we yammer on about with our paints is real. JP. <laughs> JP, you're a business owner. Some days you get a lot of emails. The goal of a topical glaze like this is to bring all of your colors together um, when you're doing some uh color layering like what we're doing with the jade and the dark purple and all of that um and you're painting quickly and with lots of texture there's a good chance that some of that kind of stands apart and looks a little funky and so uh, while we didn't have much funkiness a good topical glaze Brings it all together, blends those colors together, makes the jade, the purple, and the uh, green all look like they're meant to be sitting with one another. It also smooths out a little bit of your textures, depending on how many layers you do. I'm only doing, I only did two layers there, because I, I really like that color. Still keeps all of our blues and purples from the jade and the dark purple. 
I kept our white pretty clean on the inside. I'll have to clean up some of that, but it's not too bad. Got some like right there from yesterday. Not too bad. King Jones said, I'm sure one of the coolest things about being a business owner in the hobby is making new products that can greatly impact the community. Way to go on your current and future success. Why, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, one, I mean, obviously for us as, as hobbyists ourselves, and, you know, it, it is. It's, it's about, um, and, and the way we say it sometimes maybe sounds selfish because we like to make the things we like to use. Um, and I've been painting models for over 45 years. And so for me, every time I get to have a new product and I get to, you know, uh, mix something up here and test it and it works, you know, I get, I get giddy. I want to run around and tell everybody about it. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's not the same as in my past life of making electronics and inventing other things, mostly in the electronics world where, you know, sometimes you were just kind of told um, in like an engineering group, like, hey, you know what we really need is this. And so you found fun in how to achieve the goal, but the goal wasn't very fun. The goal wasn't anything I cared about sometimes, you know. It wasn't anything I was going to use, you know. Uh, for a couple of the companies I worked for, I couldn't afford the products we made. So, you know, it's like I, I get excited about the journey, but the product itself was kind of like, yeah, okay, cool. That's neat. You know, I hope somebody enjoys it. You know, not going to be me. And um, here, it's instantaneous gratification because you come up with something and all of a sudden it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh I have a model I want to paint with this. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, That's what yeah. happened with Noosh. Like as soon as I yeah. had Noosh in hand and we had gotten it to be at that first workable stage, I showed it off to you guys. We went back and, and refined it more. Um, and that process was that much more fun because of the feedback we got initially, um, the stuff we were doing around here with it. So that's a lot of fun. You know, not every color is that same experience, um, you know, because uh, sometimes we come up, uh, most of the colors that are super fun are the accidental ones where I'm mixing here on stream and I'm like, ooh, <laughs> that's something we could use. You know, Eclectic Salmon is one of those that'll be coming out. Um, you know, so there's a lot of really fun stuff that happens in, in the, the building of color. Uh, but it, yeah, it's not always the, the same kind of, uh, thrill as trying to come up with something new. Game Delay wants to know if you had experience with pigment before you started making paint. Um, I mean, when you say experience with pigments, having been painting for pretty much my whole life, that is the experience from a mixing standpoint. Um, or a how to use them standpoint. The only thing that we had, uh, or that I had done in my life having to do with pigments was figuring out the color combos for injection molded plastics and how all of that worked with resins and plastics, which is different process. Um, but still, you know, I guess sort of similar. Well, in your knowledge um, of art and pigments and mediums is what enabled you to make that white, you know? Like you knew, oh, yeah, yeah. you knew how to make it better yeah. than what you were using. So that, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that experience is. Yeah, but I've learned a lot just by default as going through this process since 2016, 2017. And, you know, talking with factories and, and suppliers of, you know, why you can't just get every color pigment you want and use it in an acrylic paint. Um, you know, why certain companies mix their paints in certain ways. So yeah, there's. There's been a lot of education over the past however long, six years, seven years. I'm fascinated by um, these. There's, I see a lot of these videos on like TikTok and uh, Instagram of color mixing, mm -hmm. where you know there's like we'll take we'll take something like this thing, like okay, and then you just see a palette night like it's just, you don't see a person. There's no narration. He just has paint and he scoops out colors and he just starts mixing. And then, and then holds it up at the end more, and it's exactly and the end, what it is. It's exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what I have to do with, yeah. with the signature series, yeah. you know? Hey, well, it, technically it's what we have to do with every color, but the signature series is fun in that way because an artist sends me a color and they're sending me what they've mixed with Vallejo and AK and Pro Acryl and whatever they use. Maybe they're, they're Windsor Newton acrylics, but they send me a swatch. <laughs> you know and so i get dried paint on a card and then i look at the dried paint and sit in the lab in here and i i take that dried paint it's exactly what you're talking about i then take raw pigment of which we have about 32 raw pigments that we use and i look at all my raw pigment and i'm like 
all right, let's do this, you know, and I start uh, throwing things together. And it, it, at some point it becomes sort of mad scientist because I can get very, very close very quickly 99.999% of the time. It's that final nuance of a color that you spend all the time getting. You know, does it need a hint of blue? Does it need a hint of yellow? You know, even though the color doesn't read blue or yellow, those are the things that start getting a little bit more complicated when you don't mix in the CMYK method. Most of the paints in the hobby are built through CMYK because that's the industry standard from like Pantone and everybody else. You can pick a color, you can grab a Pantone book and pick any color under the sun and say, okay, I need this. And you deliver the code and they program it into the machine and it spits out CMYK pigment and it gives you the color once you've mixed it. That's what 99% of the companies in our hobby space do, right? The problem with that, as I've said many times, is that when you mix color that way, that color is not intended to also be mixed with other colors. Um, because CMYK is built around the assumption that your color that you're mixing is the final color you need. That's not how we paint, mm -hmm. right? Um, we paint expecting every color to blend and mix with every other color we apply to the model, whether through glazing or through mixing on our palette or whatever. And so CMYK doesn't work for Procro. We don't do that. Um, there might be some colors where if you looked at how I mix them, they wind up using, you know, cyan, magenta, and yellow, but it, it's very rare. I, I, I don't even really start that way with any colors, which is a, is a, <clears throat> it's both a, a boon and a curse because a lot of my brain thinks in terms of, of how that subtractive mixing works with CMYK and how you can get that color very quickly. But the problem with that is that if you mix a brown and that brown requires a yellow in it, in order by CMYK math to work, but the brown doesn't read as super yellow. The problem is when you mix it with another color, that yellow may take over in the mix if the other color also has some yellow and you may get more yellow than you really expected because you don't have a base brown pigment. You didn't start your brown with umber, which is a raw single pigment. You started it with cyan, magenta, yellow, right? Um, and, and that doesn't create the same color that a color starting from a base pigment will. So the biggest thing for me has been utilizing those base pigments that you get to start a green with an actual raw green and then build that green into, you know, where you need it and know that you're going to have a color that mixes better at the end because it's always going to be green. So. You took AK Magenta and Citadel Squig Snot, Squig Snot. <laughs> I love this. But that's the way it is, right? I just get a paint chip and I, I don't have any other sitting here. But... Painted with a memory of the magenta. <laughs> Put them next to each other and started a rivalry. <laughs> Added a touch of your own sweat. Yeah, I tell people mostly when they send me swatches, don't even tell me the colors you used because it doesn't help me. It doesn't tell me anything. And hello, uh, and Nortox, thank you for the follow, Xrian, Gosu, hello. Go yeah, CMYK Matthew. is the easy way to do it. Jason That's why everybody does it that way. Mixing paint CMYK style in a dark room using his paint Jedi powers. Nope. Nope. We make all of our paints uh, the old fashioned way. Other than crushing pigment, I don't crush pigment in a back room anywhere. Etrian thinks that he can get us by just simply asking who's up next with the signature lines. <laughs> nice try. That's not how that goes. <laughs> All right, we're going to, I'm, I'm really liking this. I want a little bit of that yellow green back. So I'm gonna take uh, what we mixed up Oh, we didn't, we did that on the palette. So I'm gonna mix some paint up and then we're gonna airbrush onto the greens with a little bit of the green and yellow green mixed together. Didn't work, damn. <laughs> Interesting though with how you make paint goes through, yeah. Yeah, we have, uh, I mean, we have a, a, a larger collection of, um, of pigments, but for Procro, we typically use about, in all honesty, I use about 20 pigments. If you made a new line of pants, what size would those pants be? One size fits all. They'd be like bloomers that fit everybody. 
Pantaloons. The pantaloons with a cinched waist. <laughs> so it's one size fits all because I hate inventory management. So Sue said, out of curiosity, what's the most number of pigments you guys have you guys have in a paint? Oh. That's a good question. Maybe seven. But you'd never know it. <laughs> you would you would never guess that we have a paint that has seven pigments in it. So the pants wouldn't be like Marco Frizzoni sized or Craft World sized. What exactly is going on here? Are you people trying to I'll reject him straight up asking, is it flame on minute? No. <laughs> that's great that's more than i thought but the paint is great so i'm going to spend the rest of my life wondering which paint has seven pigments in it go to exactly right because i'm never going to tell you but yeah i think we have seven um it's very rare to do that and most of that is for uh the reason why it would extend beyond say four or five in most cases is because of opacifying with white and black, white and or black, right? Because if we need to tone a paint to get the color where we go, we use white and black together to make gray, but it will include it as white and black. They are also very opaque pigments, so they help a, a paint that would normally be a little bit more translucent become um, less so. So there's a lot of that. Let's test this. We're not going to fill in that blank, JP. Perfect. A glaze. Hey, JP, do you have employees? Are you someone's boss? He does himself. <laughs> he has, he's his own worst boss and worst employee. <laughs> uh, Alexic, Alexic, I have a little trouble thinning Pro Curl with water. Is there a suggested medium that I should be using when creating a glaze? I use 100% I use, uh, water for everything you see me do. Use less water is the key. You're used to painting with other paints. We formulate our paint to not have to hassle a whole lot with, so just use less. And we also have glaze and wash medium. But yeah, our glaze yeah, wash medium is fantastic yeah. for that, should you feel like you really do need. Can you answer whether the new signature artists are monumentals? No. I'm not playing this game, guys. <laughs> You'll know in March, the same time the rest of the world. Well, you guys will know earlier because we like you better, but. Well, and then they're just going to tell everyone, so that means everyone's going to know. What's that? I said they're going to just tell everyone, so that means everyone's going to know as soon as we tell chat. We just use tap water, and we are in Arizona, so there's a lot of gunk floating around in the water. Yeah, this is my paint water that I'm painting this guy with, all the glazing and stuff I've been doing. That's it. Uh, you can't even see like a millimeter deep in that. Don't do that. <laughs> that's, that's what I've been glazing with. And you can tell it's not green, which means that it is not, not the glaze water that is coloring that. Actually, it will be at Adepticon. The artists, the new signature artists will be at uh, Adepticon with us. Um, yeah, the two artists will be in the booth. Yep. So I don't know those dates. It's usually like m mid late March. JP, I ha said I have no employees. I do have two guys I pay to put things together because I can't. I am the best employee because everyone else is part time. Hi, I'm here. Did Jason confess to the new signature series partners? <laughs> nope. <laughs> and he's not gonna. <laughs> also, I'm totally letting it go to my head that Jason said he likes this more. <laughs> Awkwardish panda is just painting and giggling at the futility in chats. <laughs> yes. You got it. <laughs> Admire your persistence. <laughs> 
March 20th through 24th. That sounds The next right. signature series artist is Duncan Rhodes. That's what Panic Bomb said. Gotta be Duncan. Definitely Duncan Rhodes. Big coup incoming. <laughs> He's ditching his own paint line. How many gift subs to take a sip? We're good. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the funniest freaking twist. <laughs> Bakamaru said that cloak is stellar. It is. It looks so good. Yeah, I'm really digging it. Thank you. Duncan undermines Monument Hobbies by doing all yellows in his signature series. Calls it the Six Thin Coats line. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Let's see if it pans out. <laughs> hey, Mo. Happy Friday. A little bit up in here. This is a little bit more difficult. But... I'm going to rotate the model. On. There we go. Somehow, no overspray on the white. Look at that. I mean, I got some paintbrush marks on it, but doing okay. I'm, I'm all right. We're okay. I think that's it. I think that's pretty good. We'll have to do all the rest of the texturing and stuff with the brush, obviously. Do some weathering to get the uh, tail of the cloak dirty colored, maybe. Uh, another great reason to try your hand at airbrushing and really um, focus on making the tool very useful for you because you can do exactly what I'm doing here, which is cleaning up, you know, some of the texture that I've added, getting the color locked in. It does a great job of blending as a glazing tool. You notice I'm not really spot highlighting or anything. I'm just going over with the color to get it. Nice and neat in there, and I think that is perfect. <laughs> All right, on to black armor. I am glad that for the people who voted for green cloak, black armor, the cloak has been fun. Yeah. And I think people have gotten a lot from it. Oh yeah. And a lot of great. comments. Hopefully people are seeing how you can do some really cool color combos that might not really jump out as being the thing to do, right? We live in a world right now where everybody's talking triads, right? And, uh, you know, we always, we're not an anti-triad mentality by any means. Um, triads let you learn value placement a lot easier but triads for hue are very boring right dark blue mid blue bright blue just very boring um starting with dark purple mid blue bright blue changes everything right gives you a lot more to work with and is 
just as easy to do. I'm always looking for ways to teach people that with the same time and effort, you can get a tremendously different outcome in painting. And most of that is how you use your uh, colors once you have your brightness and darkness figured out. Do your value sketch if you want to, like Slap Chop, um, however you like to paint. Very simple to then take and you know do a uh, purple base coat, orange shadow, build up to yellow from orange, and just start having fun with color rather than worrying about do I have the right triad to mess with. Bosu is saying, I've said it a hundred times, but you recommending Payne's Gray in the shadows has completely changed my painting game for shadows. Yeah, and you know what? It's that simple, yeah. Gosu. It's literally every model, you know, that you do could have purple shadows, could have Payne's Gray shadows, you know? Um, it's, it's just too easy, and it does make such a huge difference, right? Um, trying to think, you know, like when we did the skin on this guy, right? We start from dark purple on skin as opposed to dark flesh tones and you wind up getting a much better looking model. Cherubiel. Cherubiel. Right? So you can just get a much better depth to your uh, color and volumes than if you just start with, you know, a, uh, a triad based color. So the quicker you can get your brain wrapped around doing that, the better your models will look the happier you'll be. And like I said, it takes zero extra time. None at all. A lot of the techniques that we go out and set out to learn are big hurdles or bigger hurdles, I guess, because they take time to learn, to figure out, uh, you know, get your brush control right, airbrush control right, whatever it is. Um, whereas, you know, picking the, the hue and uh, balance of your color through shadows and highlights is super simple. Is it weird now that most of the kids are gone? It's a little quieter around here the past couple days. Yeah, definitely. Some of the uh, energetic people are gone. <laughs> so we're kind of mellow around here. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a funny thing that that's the case, though, yeah. is that uh, the people that are... I just think about Gabe and how, like, you know, yeah, he's, he's around, he's all over this building all energetic, day, yeah. You know? Involved in all kinds of things and super enthusiastic and positive and all right what do i need here i'm probably going to start with blah, 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 maybe some black brown gosu that's awesome gosu said i'm really excited a youtube channel is featuring a diorama i did as a gift for my dad did a awesome. luna wolves loken diorama okay i'll post pics of it tomorrow very awesome. cool Paint looker said, I was looking at my progression photos, focusing on contrast and less on triads really made a difference. Yep. You know, I see people all the time looking at stuff like uh, um, the Craft World Studios gang, right? Husband and wife team that just paint amazing models. And a lot of people in the comments of those posts will be like, you know, oh my God, what colors did you use? And, you know, they're, they, I don't know that they respond a lot to that. And in... Some people don't. Well, because it's not the question right. you want to ask. Exactly. <laughs> you know? It's not, yeah. It's not the important question. You know, it can be. Like, if I'm sitting around talking to Eric Swenson or something, and I say, hey, what, uh, what color of purple did you use right there? You know, because I'm, ang I, I'm, I'm interested in the color of purple. But I, you know, you never ask like, oh, what colors did you use? Mm -hmm. You know, because the reality is how you applied those colors. Um, the craft world team is very, very good at a very painterly style. Lots of underpainted colors, mm -hmm. lots of colors like magentas and purples and brighter greens that are painted underneath the layers. So their models tend to look less uh, desaturated, you know, they can paint a military model that has a lot of weird undulating colors, not in the sense of, you know, like color shift necessarily, but just bringing warmth from a light source and stuff onto the model. And again, it's, it's really getting into that mindset that it's okay to experiment. There are no rules in art. And that's one of the whole points. 
you know, get yourself to a, a, a state where you're comfortable just being like, I wonder what this would look like if I did this. And test it on a little area and see if it does what you, what you like. And if it doesn't, paint over it, right? Get used to painting thin. So, Sue, if you want to um, post a link to that video, you can in chat. Um, we, we can't click on it, but uh, if other people are wanting to see, you can definitely do that. But post it in Discord, too, so that we can see it. Uh, Estrello said, have we talked about the LVO reveals yet? The Solar Auxilla look fantastic. No Shattered Legion stuff for 30k, though, which made me sad. I, uh, I, I saw, and I, you know, I went and looked at the community site and saw everything that got um, shown at the preview last night. And the only thing I was excited about were the, the crazy Crutox writers. It, it was the only thing that I looked at and I said, I'm going to paint those. Right? I've always loved Crut, but the general Crut models are not super appealing. The uh, War Shaper model in the Crut looks really bitching. I'll probably try to get my hands on one of those. But I definitely want, like, the the crew talks rampagers or whatever they're called. Those look fun. So I'll paint up one of those probably. I don't, uh, I don't pay attention in a way of, of caring necessarily for playing 40 K, but, uh, I really did like those from a model standpoint. Those were the ones that stood out the most. Um, after, you know, it was a funny because after looking at so many of the models they released, they weren't cool. They almost, I, I don't know, they, the quality of sculpts for a lot of like the War Cry stuff and the uh, Underworld stuff just didn't look up to par. Even the Kill Team one, you know, you had some Night Lords models that I'm sure a lot of Chaos players will be really excited about. Uh, but the Dark Eldar stuff looked pretty bad. I wasn't impressed with that. The Solar Auxilia stuff was cool for 30k. The fact that you get a Malkador plastic tank, I think, is big. That'll be fun. So yesterday, I think you had mentioned wanting more resins turned to plastic. So that's a that's a good a good dream come true on that end. I don't think anything else needs to be black brown, right? Maybe the base. But the Solar Auxilia have never really enticed me much. Um, the uniforms and such. I like the helmets, I think. The Night Lords got you hyped. I like the helmets with the, the gnashing teeth for some of the Night Lords. But again, I don't care for Chaos Marine, so it didn't really grab me. But I, I, the first thing I saw is I said, I bet this is going to make a bunch of people cap happy. The Night Hunt Warband. I was just not... I, yeah, Panic Bomb, and, and I just wasn't impressed with the sculpts for that. The Callus and Toll models. They were like the Witch Hunter looking ones, right? Yeah, a couple of those look kind of neat. And then the, the chaff was just kind of chaff, right? A bunch of the models just look lazy to me. Um, the Undead... Uh, I forget what it was called. The Underworlds one. Very lazy looking models. They just weren't interesting to me. Gosu. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. A lot of the chaff just looked rushed. It just looked like meh. And especially for the Warcry stuff, because the Warcry, I feel like, has, has typically been really cool looking stuff. You know, some of what makes Warcry stand out is that your your normal foot chaff are just really cool sculpts, right? So, but I didn't go into it hoping for anything, so it didn't matter to me. I don't care. I don't care. Whatever. All right, let's think about how we're going to do this black armor. I think with the kind of iridescence we've done on the the green, that blue into the black is going to work perfectly. So probably 
Payne's gray. We could also do you uh, uh, deep sea bend. Mm. Find my stuff. <clears throat> I think maybe that's even better. Maybe we follow Payne's gray up with dark sea bend. Yeah, I think we'll start with the uh, Payne's Gray as a base. And then we'll move into the Dark Sea Bin in areas. And then we'll come back and glaze black <laughs> back over all of it to get us where we want to be. So his armor is going to look like blue armor at first. I know you've already started, but Paint Liquor wanted to suggest hot pink up to black. Yep. Because that's definitely <laughs> how said, that yep. goes. <laughs> yeah, Usually when I'm painting plan. black, I think about starting with, like, you know, <laughs> pink. Did someone say paint's gray? Again, quite a bit of water on the brush. You're not concerned when doing black of getting a full, even coat. You just want the hue <laughs> on the model. So the thinner, the better here. Let more of the black show through. I may have to thicken it up in areas like that where I had a little overspray on the leg because I don't want to highlight on the back side of the legs. Hey, Licker said, I appreciate the consideration. Deep Sea Ben has two pigments, a warm yellow, like the hearth of a waiting home. Then add in the sorrow of a drowned sailor. Very dramatic. Yeah. Very, very dramatic there. Is the lion pelt going to be kind of golden? I think so, yeah. I just did black brown just to base coat it real quick. Separate it out from the green. Oh, that's... A, oh. Oh. Wait. So is he called the lion because he wears a lion? It's, um... Or is his name, like, it's the on his pelt, birth certificate, lion? It's the pelt... I believe of a creature from his home world of Caliban. Not technically a lion, but pseudo. They don't have lions in this world. All of the real lions and stuff got ended long ago. No, I I know that it's Lion L. Johnson. But it's more because he's like lion hearted. Ah. Uh. You know. He's prideful and Gotcha. His whole order of dark angels are like knights. So if you were to take a corollary to other things in fiction, it would be like King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table kind of a thing. Arthurian legend because they deal with some crazy stuff on their planet that is kind of iffy. Heavy Knights of the Round Table vibe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to call him Lionel. <laughs> so I'm with you. Extra and said, I thought it was because he was good at dancing on the ceiling. Yeah, that also. Well, he could dance on the ceiling all night long. All night long. <laughs> That would be amazing. I would paint that. What's that? A head swap STL for, for Lion to, to just be Lionel Richie. We need a 3D printed Lionel Richie head. Oh, you know the video with the blind girl and yeah. she sculpted him? We need that on this guy's head. I want that. I would pay all the money for this. <laughs> 
all the money. Well, there goes Monument <laughs> Hobbies, folks. <laughs> oh, no, that was extra. In. I didn't say that. I was just reading it. Oh. <laughs> Jen has sold the business for a Lionel Richie head. <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> I'm making all the Dark Angels fans die on the inside right now. <laughs> Why? I think there's a bummer here because I think that's Cloak. Yes, that's what I said, Panic Bomb. The one, the blind lady and the, yes, I want that, but small on him. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to recreate our green up front here. Ooh, that can be a texture trainer. I am not doing. Sorry to be the enemy of fun. But I am not trying to do a Lionel Richie <laughs> Primark as a texture trainer. Might be good fun. Yeah, would be. If we had a sculptor on staff. Yeah. Well, that's what Baca said. Okay, you have a you guys have a sculptor on tap, right? No. We have to pay for these things yeah. as they are done. And in the building. We are working on the second yeah. texture trainer right now, though. Yeah. I got that submitted to the sculptor day before yesterday or yesterday. Well, that's a that's a very good point. If we're selling the business, then we shouldn't settle for any less than the actual Lion, Lionel Richie head. Like his actual head. Uh, that's a little scary. <laughs> but this is Monument Hobbies we're talking about. And we're definitely <laughs> worth it. Yeah. Either a Lionel Richie L. Johnson or a Tutu Hulk. We've already got the Tutu Hulk, so I think that that's probably where we're going to stay. <laughs> I used to like you people. <laughs> The second texture trainer is a twerking goblin, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's going to be a surprise. Definitely a twerking goblin. It is a uh, sci-fi bounty hunter. Male bounty hunter. I think you guys and gals are going to like, if you like the, uh, the warrior that we've put out already she's amazing this next one will be uh very similar in its um scale and and positioning so to speak but we'll have different textures to play around with jeans uh it, it has kind of a a wild west vibe to it without being over the top you know I'm excited to show you. I got the final artwork render back yesterday and immediately sent it off to the sculptor. Be the same sculptor, William Sang, who did the first one, so that's going to be awesome. He already kind of has a good feel for what we're doing. Well, I missed all sorts of stuff because that's also a cloak. Oh. I'm not good at this. I'm just not good at this, people. None of us are falling for that. Shouldn't have me paint anymore. I'm so bad at painting. Panic Bomb, your texture trainer keeps getting shipping delays. Well, we just started sending them out, so it can't be that delayed yet. But Is it because of weather? Yeah, I was going to say, keep in mind what's happening in the country right now. As far as weather, we've had all kinds of discussion about the sub-zero temperatures and frozen everything. Game delay on a phone call. I come back to questions about jiggly bits. Why do I miss the best parts of stream? Well, we have decided here that we need a uh, replacement head for this lion, and it needs to be a tiny version of the Lionel Richie 
bust that the blind girl sculpted of him in the video for I think Hello. Yeah, it is. Because Hello? this is Lionel Richie L. Johnson. Is it me you're <laughs> looking for? And yes, then um, someone, the paint licker, suggested that the the next texture trainer should be a twerking goblin. And that was the Jiggly Bits part, I think. All of which are not happening. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> just predicted 10 to 12 inches of snow just overnight in my city. Rude. <laughs> Rude. I was like, you need to contact your congressperson. Have you seen the lost dog type poster with that meme? Which meme? The Lionel Richie one. It's funny because it always has like tabs torn off of it. Oh, I haven't seen it, I don't think. It has like the call this number tabs down at the bottom. There's always ones torn off. Tabs have the lyrics. Revolt. We want our twerking goblin wizard butt texture trainer. Oh, his, hello. Is it me you're looking for with his picture? Gotcha. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so we do not negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> and chat does I mean, not get to dictate might, new product if development. If it involves Lionel Richie, I might. Oh, here we go. <laughs> And Actually, selling us out. The, uh, okay, yeah, that's the meme. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna click just because we just don't click links in, in chat. But I'll, I'll Google it. Uh, Slayer Street wants to know if you're still using the same starter brush. Seems like it's holding up well. I uh, um maybe. No, I think I, well, it's the same size, but I think I grabbed a new one. Yeah, I grabbed a new one. But this is this is the one I've been using for like the um, the gorgers. Okay. So it's Onward. Just clean. I think I did the gorgers, Captain America, um, the two Starfleet ships. I can't remember what else, but everything else, yeah. Red Skull, this guy. I don't know why I changed brushes. I'll switch back. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've been very pleased with these. So uh, I, I do believe I've got a couple more that I've been running tests on that I have not been as pleased with. I haven't shown those on stream because they didn't make the initial cut. Um, they gave up their tip too fast. These have been fantastic, though. Uh, Sapo said, Fuse, care to share the meaning behind your name and the ink on your hand? Who wants to tell them? <laughs> I can tell them. I, yeah, I don't mind sharing it all. Huh? I, I, yeah. I, I, no, I was just answering the I don't mind sharing it oh, all. Oh, yeah. No, he, he shares. He tells. Do you want me to tell him or you want sure, to? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So the name Fuse came, is Slow Fuse, actually, and it was from uh, his video game days. It was going to be Slow Burn, right? Slow Burn Gaming or which something? Is, yeah, which is on my knuckle. That's what's on. Burn. That's what the, the tattoo, and there's a story for that. Um, but Slow Burn was taken already on Twitch. Yep. So it would have had to been Slow Burn with like a bunch of numbers, and he didn't want to do that. So Slow Fuse. Yeah, League of Legends had just come out, and Brand as a one of the characters on League of Legends has a a, vo a vocal that he does during the game that says it's a slow burn. Oh, and so a lot of people go. had already taken the name. There's yeah. like slow burn 492 on Twitch. Yeah. So I was like, nope. So slow fuse came as as like an alternate, and then he's got the 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 little mascot icon thing with the the bomb snail. So it's a snail slow but it's got the, the bomb with the lit fuse on it. Uh, and then the tattoo uh, on his knuckles, it says slow burn. 
and it's um, from a conversation he had with his great grandmother or grandmother? Great grandmother. Great grandmother. Yeah, exactly. That she um, he lived so Jason as a young boy lived with his grandmother and great grandmother, and grandmother was born in nineteen twenty. Oh, my great grandmother was born in nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred, and um, lived to be one hundred and four. Lived to be one hundred and four. So she, when he, when he was a teenager and be like going out and doing teenage guy things, um, she would be like, you know, just take it easy, burn bright, but burn slow, right? Yep. Yeah. Burn bright, but burn slow. So that's where the slow burn. Wiser words have never been spoken to me since. Yeah. Good advice for anyone. Don't let the world keep you from doing what you're doing, but be smart about it, is basically the way I translate all that. Right? You can be reckless and go about your life, and, you know, if, if somebody tells you not to do something, you can go do it anyway and get yourself in a lot of trouble. Right? So be smart about how you decide to do the... Don't have to be reckless things, but all those things you do in your life. Now, when did you get the tattoos? Does she, did she know about them? No. Or was it past? Okay. No, it was, it was after, after she, she passed. passed. I got uh, my hand tattoos in 2012. Okay. I want to say. Like that? 2011, maybe? I think 2011. It is. It's one of my favorite stories. He told us, or he told me that story on our first date, and because of course I asked about the tattoos, um, but it's something that that we have in common because I lived with my grandparents when I was a kid as well, and learned a lot from them. Very influential. Very important. Things we can learn if we listen to the older generation. Or he was definitely the older generation. She didn't ride a bike. Never ridden a bike. Never swam. Never swam in a swimming pool. Um, used to teach never piano. Never drove a car. Piano lessons. She gave piano lessons. She had to, yeah, she had to teach piano lessons. As a kid. As a kid. Because her father died when she was really young, and her mom didn't know how to do anything other than be a housewife. So uh, she taught piano lessons to bring in money for the family. And her brother... Uh, went to work at a very young age to do the same. So between her and her brother, they had to, you know, make all the money. And then was it her, pretty hus amazing. her husband that was the architect? Yeah. And yeah, my great-grandfather was an architect. I have his set of pastels. <laughs> that he's used on stream many times. Well, and she this was supportive of, of his interest in art and things like that, right? Because didn't she buy you things, or was that your grandmother? My grandmother and my great-grandmother were both very, very supportive um, of my endeavors in the creative sense. Um, I, I think that, you know, like most grandmothers and great-grandmothers especially, that, you know, were from those times, especially my great-grandmother having lived through the Great Depression, mm -hmm. That sometimes when you would say, hey, I'd really like this Tiger Tank model that's, you know, back in the day was $45 or whatever it was, that that was a little hard <laughs> to understand. So there were times when, you know, you didn't, didn't get what you wanted. But, yeah, they were very supportive of, of my art. You got me drawing stuff. And because my great-grandfather had been an architect and an artist himself, he did watercolors and things like that, you know, I think that really had a resonating effect with my great-grandmother because he died when I was three. Mm. Yeah, I mean, living through, through two world wars and, you know, other, lots of other conflicts in her lifetime and 
so many changes. I mean, the the amount of change from 1900 to 2004. It's insane. It's crazy. <laughs> you should write a book. <laughs> All the things you've done sounds like a good read. Musician, motorcycle builder, skater, artist. What have you not done? Lots. <laughs> Lots. Born before air flight and lived to see the internet. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's funny because she never cared about any of that yeah. air internet stuff, right? My grandmother, I finally had to get her a computer and uh, teach her how to use the internet because I moved away right. and we had to keep in touch that way. So, how is his shield painted? Already 3.30. It's 3.33, yep. Is his shield, is it like red? Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, I think it is. Red and gold. Does anybody know the story behind his shield? Like, what's going on with his shield? Is it a, a thing of legend? Is it something that... I think it's like the Emperor's shield? It's not a Dark Angels thing. The Emperor's shield? Oh, okay. Big E. Yep. I was he, saying, I, th I, thought it it was, I thought it was the Emperor's shield. But is it, does it have some specific coloring and lore? Has anybody ever, had we ever even known the Emperor had a shield prior to the lion coming out as a model? <laughs> is this just more nonsense? To help him balance on the ceiling. I feel like it's just more nonsense. Mo said it's Aramite, I believe. Okay, so lots of gold. So it's like custodes type stuff. Gotcha. So the shield would be a little different. It, it wouldn't be necessarily um, matched to his armor and the rest of his uniform then, right? That's kind of cool, actually. Gives us a neat way to have it be painted different. Tell a little bit of a story with the model because of that. Estrello said the emperor's tilting, the emperor's tilting shield, which the lion is using as a regular shield. Oh, seriously? This is the shield that that would go on his breastplate. That's insane. If that's the case, the old emperor's artwork. He has the like. Is that supposed to be shoulder tilt shield? Yeah, it goes on his uh, his uh, over his breastplate portion where the armor overlays. He has one too, right there. <laughs> See that little thing right there with oh, the yeah, lion yeah. head on it? Yeah, yeah. He's trying to say that's this. I mean, that would make the emperor like eight hundred feet tall, so that's not true. Oh. Calling him Big E. That can't be true. He ain't that big. Google anything for you? No, uh, -uh no. That old artwork is nearly one one to the lion shield to this. Yeah, it it couldn't have been like a thigh plate or a you know a a like this thing on the chest plate, right? Oh, so they're saying that that's not just like a replica of the one on the guy's chest it's actually that piece that he like took from the guy's chest yeah oh yeah that's huge well, i mean the art from the the end in the death is not to scale i don't think built shield design what did the math from the 
I mean, you have to be honest and say that if the Emperor was 20 feet tall, then Horus wouldn't have stood a chance no matter how powerful he was because the Emperor was, like, super powerful. He was taller than a Custodes. But you have to understand, I mean, just look at the scale here. Look at this thing on his chest, his tilt, and this, right? Yeah. That's easily, like, five, six times larger. So you're saying the Emperor, he's got to be, what, eight to ten feet tall? So the Emperor would be, like, 70 feet tall. That's not a thing. Yeah, it goes through. The scale is just off. So it's like a replica of the Emperor's tilt shield or something. That's silly. If it were a buckler, if they'd have given it to him as like a buckler, something small on his forearm, then I would have bought into it. But like a full-size shield like this, that's stupid. <laughs> that's like just dumb. The Emperor's actually a battle mech. He's a Warlord Titan. All the Warlord Titans were made in his image, I think is the idea there, right? It was his thumbnail plate. <laughs> Pissing off the purist one at a time. This is what happens with relics. <laughs> well, but, okay, so everybody can say they have the thigh bone of John the Baptist, right? But the thigh bone isn't 80 feet tall, right? Not everybody has a shard of the thigh bone like the femur of John the Baptist, that where if you put them all together, it fits together like a puzzle and he's 40 feet tall, right? It's just a bunch of people lying, is what that is. I have the real leg bone of John. Also, here? Oh, yeah, that is. Wow. Just totally missed that that was all part of his tunic cape. He was a psyker, so he's an AI construct. Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't be a heretic. <laughs> What's this massive shield? The Emperor's codpiece. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> the Emperor isn't above some exaggeration for the sake of public relations, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the End in the Death Part 3 just recently went on pre-order. So, hoping to get there soon. I am not excited for it. I am and I am. am not, right? Is Mo here? Mo, are you here? Mo was here a while ago. Yes, Mo is here. What do we think, Mo? I'm excited for it to be over, right? But I'm not excited to read it. <laughs> These books have gone so downhill in their writing quality. Half of me thinks that Dan Abnett has pulled a George R.R. R. Martin on these, has written the outline, and then given it to 
lesser writers. Mo said, I'm scared it's going to suck, but I think you and I are on the same page. Yep. Ghost who said, I've been blasting through the heresy, hoping I could get to the end before the last book. I'm almost done with book 50. 50 books, and I started reading them three and a half years ago. 50, How many are there? 57. Before you get to the last nine or ten. I thought seven Harry Potter books was a lot. Kind of is. <laughs> Yeah, it's a big story. It spans a whole galaxy, right? And has to sell a lot of models. So It is a huge production. I do uh, give them kudos for the fact that they have pulled this off. And is it it's like one long series? Yeah. Do they well, end in like cliffhangers? Oh, okay, so here it is. There's a lot of things that are not finished and sewn up in the story. Right? There are a lot of, because you have 20, well, really 18, you have 18 legions of space marines that are in this story. Nine of them turn against the emperor and nine stay loyal. And so the series is about the events that transpire from beginning to end, which we're coming up on the end. But in the middle of all of that are a bunch of books that are written about specific legions of space marines and what they're doing at the time. Okay. So you do not have to read all of them because okay. a lot of those so legions like little... have nothing to do with the main story arc. They weren't as involved. They're like spinoffs, kind of. Yeah, they're more like spinoff stories. If you want for completion, you would read the whole thing, but it's not necessary. I have not read 57 books. No. Slavic, hello. Said, wow, this cape is completely different from yesterday. More green now. Who says that? Slavic. Slavic. Yeah. We, uh, we followed up a little bit more today. Did a little bit of airbrushing on it. And I've got it to a good point. Now we're going back in and painting the parts of it that I forgot existed. So <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> been a journey for sure yeah and it's a lot of books right it's a ton of books i only read the ones that appealed to me there's certain legions i don't give a damn about and they didn't make the story integral enough with those ones that i didn't care about to go back and read them like the the um uh, the salamanders right don't care uh raven guard don't care iron hands don't care the, the novels the Iron Hand showed up in, they were my least favorite part of any of those novels. So I was like, yep, not reading about them. Uh, Iron Warriors, don't care. They again. I think a lot of it was just the personality that was baked into the various Primarchs. Either grabbed me or did not. Um, the Word Bearers, obviously one of the biggest uh, antagonists in the entire thing. So I read all the Word Bear novels. Uh, I really wound up liking Karn and uh, Argyll Tall's part of the story. So I read all of those books. The Traitor and, you know, First Heretic, all that stuff. Gosu almost said, I agree, Jason, until you said Iron Warriors. I know. Draven 1976 said, I know we were talking Warhammer, but I did really like the Battletech novels. You did? Good. What did you read? Did you start with, like, uh, Decision at Thunder Rift and all that kind of stuff? The original Stackpole ones? With the Grey Death Legion? They're very, they're very Hollywood epic, right? So they're very, uh, like, you know what you're getting as they happen. And yes, all of them. Yeah. I can read a handful of, of uh, Battletech novels, and then I got to go <laughs> read something else.
but some hot mech on mech action is always good. <laughs> Yeah, when Wid's kids did the Dark Age. Now, believe it or not, I read some of the Dark Age books when they came out and, and did not have a problem with them. Some of that stuff was actually pretty good. Um, you know, it, it was definitely a leap of faith to jump into that part of the, the universe had you been reading along the other ones, and I understood that from people that I was hanging out with at the time when the, the Clicks game came out and all that stuff, but... It still had a lot of good stuff going for it. I'm not going to remember any of the books. I see them occasionally show up on Audible, on my Audible recommended list, but I haven't ever gone and bought back into them or anything. So far, no. Been safe from bot attacks. Today, yeah. Today, yeah. So we've heard they're going around. Let's hope. Got about 10 minutes left. <laughs> Hopefully whoever did it was sitting in chat and realized it didn't affect us, so yeah. they'll leave us alone because we don't, we don't care. But you never know. People are weird. I was pulling out of, I went to Taco Bell for lunch today. And, uh, which, by the way, they have done away yet again with the double-decker taco. Yeah. Okay. They have something called a double-stacked taco. It's not the same. It's almost the same, but it has cheese instead of beans, so it's that. not. Nope. <laughs> no, it was not $2,000. Well, I don't think so. I haven't checked. I, checked <laughs> I check every time. It's crazy. I feel stupid, but I do check every single time. Oh. Only once. It was seventeen dollars <laughs> at lunch, and I had to make sure they didn't charge me seventeen hundred. <laughs> yeah, our Kurdish panda was here earlier, and she said that. And they were talking about brush for hire as well. Yeah. We need better hobbies. They need to start painting miniatures. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand the targeting of painters. Like, yeah. it, who's mad sense. at the community and for what? Uh, Chuck, you don't need to thin the texture paste. Nope. And, you can, but you don't have to. And um, yeah, we we had a, a a register error. Jason got a, a drink at Taco Bell, and it was a two thousand dollar Baja Blast or something like that. Yeah, it was a two thousand dollar Baja Blast for Carter, yeah. I think manually put that in there uh, i am going to go lock up and send the team off for the weekend i'll be right back all right there we go i have fixed the fact that i missed parts of the cloak i don't know how i missed that but there you go Who did Rhino piss off? What are we talking about? <clears throat> Dr. Rhino thinks it has something to do with him? 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Who did Rhino piss off? Mo, someone tried to swat. Yeah, yeah, I contacted Kenny that same day to make sure that uh, uh, he was, he felt okay leaving his mom there. And he had already talked to the sheriff's office and all that stuff, so. Yeah, Mo, that was crazy. Yeah, he posted it up on social media for evidence, right? <laughs> Silly. Silly people being silly, man. All right, let's take some Dark Sea Ben. And start sketching in a few highlights. It's a tad bit brighter than Payne's Gray. Not by much, but it also leans a little bit more green than Payne's Gray does. Payne's Gray being a blue. So this will be where we start to find our... Uh, Lighting direction, right, is usually what I do on the armor. So, obviously, the upper edge of the knee here. Actually, the lower end of the shin plate, because... This is where the grieve comes back out into the light. Obviously not okay. It's just bored, right? Bored people get mad and do bored people things, right? The fact that they choose to cause other people grief is just a troll thing. It's been around forever. I was saying that when I went to Taco Bell, I, I didn't finish, um, today... When I was leaving Taco Bell, there's a school, like a high school maybe, or a charter school at the high school level, middle school level, right across the street from or the Taco Bell that I go to. And uh, in the uh, yard, right, common grounds area there at that school, there was like, you know, recess going on or whatever. And uh, this guy... They had like a, uh, you know, like a volleyball, it looked like. And uh, they were tossing the volleyball back and forth. I was, I was sitting at the light so I could see all this go down. They're tossing the volleyball back and forth. And this kid, this one guy just gets it. You know, he's probably 15, 16 years old or something like that. He just gets it and just punts it right into this girl's face. Like, this girl is maybe from here to the wall, maybe 10 feet away from him. And somebody gives him the ball, and he just he just looks at it, and he gets it and looks right at her, and then kicks it right into her face when she wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sitting there looking at this happen, and I'm just thinking to myself, that kid has never, like, been threatened, right, in his life. And I'm just like, Wow. Somebody needs to stick up for that girl right this minute and sock that kid right square between his teeth. Or he'll grow up and swat people on the internet, right? It's just like, come on, man. 
I felt so bad. Nothing you can do. Necronomatron says sometimes violence is the answer. Um, that's a, you know, that's a good conversation to have, right? Because I'm a firm believer that those who can and choose not to are, uh, are indicative of the right way to live your life, right? You have to be able to defend yourself and do that kind of stuff. But being violent for violence sakes or, you know, being a bully, that, that definitely doesn't fall into that purview. But yeah, that kid needed a smackdown for sure. And unfortunately, he, he probably would not get one. Well, for all I don't know anything about the situation. For all I know, he's the he's the cool kid on the block. Oh, this is going to be good. It's going to look good with that green. I do believe. Or maybe SmackDowns are what he already gets from somebody else. Hmm. Yeah. I, uh... I don't have that anecdotal evidence, but I hear it all the time. Yeah, to the benefit of that, could very well be true. People that get mistreated in their environment by weak-minded individuals can turn into that, and that is a very big shame. Because discipline requires after-action reports, right? You got to sit down and have people understand why they got disciplined, you know? So I guess that's a a good thing to say here. You can't just walk up to somebody, punch them in the face, leave, and hope they get it. <laughs> They're not going to get it. Trust me. So that's a very, very valid point. It's a shame because when I was young, all the bullies I knew came from homes that you would not have been able to identify why in the world this person was a bully. This one kid, James Jones, first kid I ever got in a fight with. And, uh, you know was always the one where nobody could could figure out you know good parents <laughs> you know people that you would have been like why why is this kid the way he is and people just wake up and choose violence maybe Pretty good progress today, actually. 
not a lot of, well, I guess it really is, right? The visual nature of the green has come a long way today. Uh, the black we didn't get too far on, but we'll pick that back up on Monday. Baby J will be back with us on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on if he takes his, uh, his day for the show as soon as he gets back or chooses to bank it later. Waking up and choosing violence, like Panic Box Arcade claiming the Emperor is the fifth Chaos God. <laughs> you can't trust that guy. <laughs> AG Dijon. Yeah, it, negotiating with violence is, is difficult because at some point, that's all they speak, all they know, right? Jason Rowland's shotgun in the Pokevan outside schools. We are the authority. That would be so funny if you were like, if you were like, you know, vigilante in a Pokevan. <laughs> Trying to be Batman, but all you could get for a car was, like, the hot dog truck from the store you worked at. Oh, Awkwardness, you got a couple thousand bot follows? That's crazy. Ours ran for the whole show yesterday. It just happened at the beginning of the show and was just like... Brrr. But it, you know, because it's so much injected all at once, who the hell knows? Right? I didn't bother to go check like our follow thing. We don't really pay attention to it that much. Travel Cedric, many people just don't get to experience the find out part of the statement. It It's weird, right? Because nowadays that is the case and I don't wish harm on anybody, but if you're going to cause that type of a disturbance, it's like at some point in time, you are going to in life find out, you know, because you're gonna mess with the wrong person. At least that was the way it was when I was growing up. You know, you could be a big talker, but then when you ran into a big doer, you know, the big talker tends to, to you know, to find out the way the world is. I, 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 we've all done it. We've all been the big talker at some point. I'm not talking about in, in like pestering violent situations, but, you know, as a kid, you know, we've all gone through that know-it-all phase, you know, and some people that know-it-all phase lasts a long time. <laughs> and, and, you know, I've seen it go down in, in rough ways, so. Go exactly the school speed limit and do not look out the window as you drive the Pokemon by. <laughs> you're going to get pulled over just because. Like, you can do everything right. They're going to check you out if you're in the Pokemon. Like, like uh, uh, going by and scoping schools out. You got the bot raid thing down to a science most days. Well, that's good. It's something we don't see much because as a, as a company streaming, for those people who know us, I think they, they understand that this isn't the same effect. If you come in here and act the fool, we just ban you. You know, eh, what are you going to do? You're going to swat Monument Hobbies? We know the police here. We're business. <laughs> we, we, we own this building. We've talked to them multiple times. Um, you know, so what are you going to do? You know, not that it couldn't be done, but you're not going to be, you're not going to get what you need out of it. You know, they're going to come knock on the door and say, is everything okay here? <laughs> We're going to be like, yeah. King Tone, what you did for the cape was to create contrast with your layers and then airbrush it all together. Um, yeah, to some extent, the airbrushing was really a blend layer um, to keep and, and, and keep my textures on there for the, the cloth texture that I'm going for but to bring the hues all together. Because yeah, all we did was layer very roughly the purple, the jade, uh, the green, and then the mix 50-50 of green and bright yellow green. Then I did the wash with the, the black green, right? That we created with our glaze wash medium. We just took an opaque color and turned it into a wash and put that all over it. That was the first blending layer, right? Because a lot of times when you watch me paint, I don't spend a lot of time blending on those initial layers. Sometimes I will, I'll teach people how to wet blend base layers and stuff, and that works great. Um, and it's a neat technique to know when you're wanting to move a little quicker, especially during stream and stuff, just putting down color is the way to do it. Hey, so you use color and you do it pretty thin, so you're only having to put down like one or two coats of that color, but it blends a little bit with the color underneath it. And you're making bigger jumps, like dark purple to jade is a pretty big jump in value. And then jade to green is a pretty big jump in value, where you wouldn't do that if you're blending, necessarily. You would mix colors to get, you know, more of the in-between midtones. 
Um, but because we made those big jumps and created that contrast very vividly on the model, then we need to blend that contrast together better. And that's what the dark green did when we used the black green for the first wash. It blended the stuff coming out of the shadows into those midtones. And then when we got that done, we went back with the airbrush with that 50-50 mix of green and bright yellow green again and airbrush that. And that blends the, the high spots. And I chose to airbrush that rather than treat it, even though I created the same type of wash and I could have applied this with the brush. I didn't want it running into the recesses because we have so many physical low spots on the cape. You don't want the bright color getting in there in a way that pools up. So using the airbrush is really just a means to take a bright color and be able to filter it over the whole thing um, without piling up a lot of bright pigment in low spots and ruining your shadows. So you can do it with the brush. It just takes more time than I wanted to spend on it. Dark Arisen, what's going on? <laughs> also, is this a custom unit? This is uh, from Warhammer 40K, and this is the Lion. He's one of the Primarchs. Uh, he's the Primarch of the Dark Angels. And so it's just a fresh out of the box. It's the way it comes. This is him from uh, Games Workshop. Lion L. Johnson. Lion the Johnson. This is him. We're not following the box art, but we're doing our own thing, but... Fun model. I have painted him before with the old model for 30K. And so now we're doing something different for him. All grown up 10,000 years later. <laughs> Lion the Rock Johnson. Lion the Rock Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Um, what time do you need to leave to get to your thing? Now. Okay. <laughs> I told him I might be a little bit late because I didn't know if I could find somebody to to uh stay with the game night people if they weren't but because only two people were staying i told them no game night so that's it we're done thank you for hanging out and watching this green cloak come together we will be continuing the lion next week as we turn all of this blue and uh this uh our Payne's gray and dark sea ben that we've layered on there into black armor his armor will be a nice uh deep black when we're done so uh, stick around for that. Join us. We stream five days a week. So if you're new around here, please hit that follow button uh, Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time here in the U.S. Uh, we are Monument Hobbies. We make all of these wonderful products you've seen me using, brushes and paints and all of that. So you can check out the store uh, and the FLGS links that Jen put up in the chat there. The store will link you directly to our website where you can buy everything direct from us here in the United States. Uh, if you're international or if you want to support your local game store, which we uh, definitely wish you would, uh, hit that FLGS link. It'll show you the map of stores around the world that carry our products. Uh, go give them a try. Uh, the Discord and the YouTube uh, will give you good links into our community. Discord, we've got over 3,000 amazing artists just like yourselves uh, who uh, are great for inspiration, uh, good jokes, some really fun pet picks lately. I like yeah. the cats that found the catnip. That was funny. Oh, I don't think um, I saw that one. <laughs> they, were, they were both doing the drool and rub thing in the photo. You could tell they are both laying down. Uh, yeah, so great great community stuff over on the Discord. We'd love for you to join us there. And then the YouTube, where you can catch up with all of the past live streams as well as all the other content for tutorials that we create in shorts uh, and our commercials and things like that all over on the YouTube channel. So go check them out. So uh, stick around. We're going to find somebody to raid uh, for some more great hobby goodness as uh, you go off into the evening. Have an enjoyable weekend. Hope you have a lot of fun, and we'll catch you back here on Monday. Adios, gang. Bye, everyone.